first of all, how's your end? Thank you. Yeah, uh, I don't know yet because the thing is that I twisted it, let's say, pretty bad. The moment I twisted it, I thought it's going to be just fine and I'm going to stand up. Then the pain started raising, uh, let's say, brutally. So I actually thought it's going to be bad and I'm not going to be able to continue. Then they taped it. Uh, in the beginning, it was quite painful. So I was more uh, concerned and focused on my ankle than the game. And that actually helped me a little bit to play better. Uh, and then for the rest of the match, adrenaline was probably kicking in. So it was not easy to walk. That's why I was limping. But to move was uh, was easier. And so in a way, I, I can understand how tough it is for the opponent when he sees you limping and then running for all the drop shots and stuff. Uh, and w which is completely normal now that I have cooled down. It's big. I, I cannot walk uh, properly. But uh, if... If everything is going to be fine, I'm going to tape it tomorrow, take one uh, painkiller and uh, go to play. So not much more to add for the moment. Pretty painful, but uh, nothing too bad, hopefully. So I've never really rolled it. Um, I, I remember rolling it a few times on the Futures. So it was not ATP physios who were uh, taping it. Uh, and it was long ago, so uh, I didn't know. Uh, I, uh, that's why I asked so many questions to the physio. I was like, is it still dangerous? He told me, no, it's not, unless you roll it again. But with the tape, normally it's not possible. So that assured me that I can kind of try it at least. And then if I cannot, I will retire. Uh, then it was still pretty painful. So I asked my physio, uh, it's painful, but can I play or not? He said yes. So then I was like, OK, one more opinion where I can play. Uh, and now, yeah, for some time, I'm for sure going to need to tape it because, uh, yeah, the ankle is, uh, becomes uh, looser. So if you don't tape it, you're just going to roll it over and over and over till you break it. So, yeah, going to tape it for a couple of weeks, days, uh, and hopefully can play tomorrow. You hit that uh, great <laughs> beeping overhead off overhead. Um, talk about that was special. And I, I don't know whether you follow such things, but uh, I don't know whether you're familiar with the the Federer overhead. Ah, yes, 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 yes. First, uh, I, I saw some comments about Federer overhead, and I was like, which one? And then I remember the one against Roddick. Well, his one was tougher because he was on the run and out of the court. But if I remember right, the moment was a little bit less uh, uh, less tight in a way because we had one all on the tiebreak, and uh, I was one set to laugh down. Uh, yeah, I got in a way lucky that he put the ball where I was standing. Uh, I, I'm also lucky that uh, the courts here are slow, so I could actually hit it and not uh, it didn't go uh, over my head. And yeah, the, the, the timing, the position of the ball was perfect, so I managed to kind of, in a way, hit the serve, but from very far position. And the only thing I said to myself, just hit it full power, there is no other choice. I hit it cross court, and it was an amazing shot, well, but... I mean, even if you try to practice it, you probably miss eight or nine out of ten. So that was uh, one lucky one. And uh, yeah, that's great to have uh, such shots in such important moments that saves your life. During the past few days, you've been very candid in expressing your opinion about the courts and the balls. I was wondering, uh, have you guys uh, talked about this in the locker room? And do you think players should have a say? Should there be a, some kind of a committee that player, the players' council should have a uh, some kind of opinion on this? Wow. Uh, that's a super tough question because it always comes down to uh, how many players play here in the main row. What is it, 90, uh, 96 players? I know that when I express this opinion, uh, when I say these things I say on the court, I don't even want to say it again because I actually love the tournament. I just don't like the court. <laughs> um, I understand that maybe out of 96 players, actually 60 is going to say, well, the court is fine. So. That's just my problem. Uh, I do know that some people also don't like it, but it comes to the question if 80 players come out and say the court is too slow and something has to be changed, then that's bad that it's not changed. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, mm, I don't think that uh, player, um, how it's called, I forgot the name, Co council, player council is actually capable of doing something with it. And I'm not sure it has to be done because there are guys like Cam Nori, like uh, I don't know if Alcaraz likes to play here, but Nori definitely adores to play here. And then he would be like, why did we change the courts? And he's right. So we cannot change the courts just because I don't like it. I, here, 
uh, talking calm, I understand this and I don't like my behavior on court. But on court, uh, I get crazy because there are some points where I feel like I'm hitting five, ten good shots and then I get a winner. I'm like, that's not possible normally. <laughs> and I get crazy, yeah. Daniel, at that point in the sixth game of the second set when you suffered the injury, could you even imagine that you were going to win this match in three hours and 17 minutes? Uh, definitely not. Uh, I, I honestly, when I was lying on the ground, because as I say, the moment I fell down, I was like, you know, try to stand up almost straight away and the pain kicked in. And I, I, then I, I even, uh, what was it, the doctor came in first and he said, uh, let's go to the chair. I was like, I don't know, I'm scared to go to the chair. Then I was like, OK, I try. So I went. Uh, I, I thought I'm going to retire. But I always, I always like to give it a try. Uh, I had few times in my uh, career where I thought I'm going to retire, same, and I always give it a try. And if I cannot, that's uh, when I retire. Big example is the match against Novak during the tiebreak. I felt that I uh, torn, uh, torn the muscle. I knew it. So I finished the tiebreak and I retired because I knew that, uh, well, I'm not going to play with the torn muscle. So if I, if I would by myself feel that I torn a ligament there, I would not play. But uh, there were two opinions where, which said I can continue to play unless I feel too painful. Uh, and yeah, I was uh, moving only better and better with adrenaline. So uh, yeah, and even without talking uh, about the ankle, the match was itself crazy. Uh, where even about without talking about this, he had what ten breakpoints in the second set. He, you know, when you have ten breakpoints, you are much closer to winning it, and maybe you even deserve it. But that's tennis. Sometimes these moments happens, and the confidence definitely helped me.